All right, so today we're going to go over streaming settings uh, for high-end PCs. High-end is just basically anything with more than six uh, CPU cores and any GPU made in the last year or two. So the first thing you need to do is set this view mode to master. This allows you to see all the settings I'm talking about. And yes, even before that, set up your Twitch uh, as streaming and then set ignore streaming service setting recommendations. So normally you're limited to 6,000 video bitrate, but Twitch introduced a bug a while back that allows non partners to use 8,000. And until they fix that, which they might just say, hey, we didn't even notice that and it didn't cause issues, so let's make that a feature. Um, but until they fix it, we can use 8,000 without getting throttled. Um, then you want to go to your output and your streaming settings. You want to use 1280 by 720. Now, if you were a partner that might open up the other options like 936 or whatever, there's other, uh, scales, but because not every PC can handle those scales, 720 is you know universal mostly and it has the least like rescaling impact and it's also one of the lowest bit rates or one of the lowest pixel densities that still looks pretty good so set that uh, on i guess the video okay so is the first oddity you want to set your fps to energy fps and then set that to 90. So some people, like by default, this will be 60. And then some people turn it up to 120. 120 is too high. And the, the bitrate consumption is just really high. And the, the loss of quality in the frames just doesn't justify increasing the FPS. Now, maybe for something like Kovacs, which is like, really blocky or something you could increase this but i suggest 90. And then in the advanced you want to have mv12 uh, color formatting srgb and then set the range to limited limited makes it look a little bit less colorful and whatnot you can kind of fake that with some contrast filtering but basically people really can't tell the difference between good color and bad color Half, half these people's monitors won't even be able to display a full color range, so just encode it at a limited set, and then I set this based on my monitor. Um, back to the output, select the preset of Twitch streaming. That some some of these get grayed out because I'm streaming, but some of them get grayed out because of the preset. Um, but we'll go over the ones that can change so I set the quality to quality which uh increases the quality but like adds latency and lowers speed encoding but as this is for high end systems that doesn't really matter and then the encoding type you want to set that to a binary encoding which as it says is a little bit uh slower but a smaller encoding you want the encoding to be as small as possible to maximize your bitrate usage so set it to binary then set maximum ref frames to six and we'll talk about that and then you want to set the pre-pass or no you want to set the rate control this constant bitrate i think this is auto set with the Twitch thing because Twitch really likes the constant bitrate setting. And then you want to set the target bitrate to 8,000. If you're running into a little bit of throttling issues, you might try lowering this just a tad. Um, oh, and set pre-pass to enabled, which increases performance penalty, but um, makes the distribution look better. Uh, frame skipping disabled. 100% and 
VBAQ. You want that enabled? Helps pixel distribution and the bitrate distribution. Less artifacting. Uh, HRD, you can set that to enabled. It just helps to not drop frames and whatnot. It should not matter, but I guess you keep it on just so your stream doesn't crash or something. Or the encoder will crash. Uh, high quality motion motion boost. You want this enabled. And what this is doing is it's an algorithm that tries to uh, guess where it should put attention. So it'll see a moving object or something. And even before you go flick to aim at that object, it's like, oh, that looks interesting. Put a little bit more bits over there. Um, it's a little bit less aggressive than I would like. I'd like it to just be like a focus type of thing where everything else is just blurry besides what's in focus. And they make like plugins for this. I might even try messing with one. They also have ones with like your, your eyes. So where your attention is, if you've seen the streamer thing, you look somewhere, it'll register that with your camera and then it'll put bits over there and that'll be the focus area. But anyways, yeah, just turn this enabled. VBV, just set that out of 50, 100. Um, now the interesting stuff. The IDR period. Uh, set that to zero. Now I forget what this does, but I looked it up and zero is the number to use. The iframe interval, set this uh, to zero. And set, all right, set all the intervals to zero, which is just disables this as far as I know and then set the period uh, to 11. So for the iframes these are called interval frames and you want these frames at certain intervals because they're real frames. So now we're introducing like um, contextual frames and these ones are necessary to generate that context. And 11 is just what happens to be a nice sequence. So then the P frames, you want those at three. Now the I frames override the P frames, but so that's why it's the, the highest distance. Then you put in some P frames. Those are called previous frames. They just look back and try to find a reference and then generate their frame off the reference. And so what you're doing here is you only have to generate expensive frames every so often, and they use a lot of bitrate. But then some frames you can save a lot in the encoding by making them contextual. And so if something on your screen is just shifted from some other frame, which happens a lot, then it'll block that and say, yeah, just uh, make that as a context frame. Right? Um, then the B frames, B frames are bi-directional frames, so they look forwards and backwards to find a reference frame. And you want these at zero because you want as many B frames as you can have, but you, the P frames override and the I frames override. And so the pattern will end up looking like this. And then you want to go to your reference frames, enable that, turn the delta to one, which just says, how long can I wait to find a reference frame? And you want this like this fairly low um, so that your system and other people's systems can handle this. So you could just go like full crazy mode and set it to like all B frames and every frame can be a reference. And so then you could have like a sequence like I, E, reference, 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 reference. You could have like a huge buffer, but then people's systems would 
just fill up with frames and have so much encoding cost and it just wouldn't be great so it's a balancing act and this seems to work and then the blocking filter you turn that enabled motion estimation which is how it determines where things are moving order and half pixel i don't know if we can change that um and there might be some error in changing it but order and half pixel seems to be a good setting open cl stuff enable multi-threading disable you size you want this is 12 and that's based on the time before it repeats so you want to just count how many frames until you reach an iframe and then that should be your queue size and if you're worried about like missed frames or whatever you can have a queue size of like two if you're using normal encoding which is all iframes yeah and you might want a double uh, wide buffer but Really, it's just until you reach an iPhone. So, well. Um, and that's pretty much it.